Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Extra Time TV. This is Andre Sopla. I'm Kevon Campbell. And Kevon, big news for Trinan Tobago. Yeah. You know, there are lots of questions, lots of names being thrown around. We spoke about it today in our live feed. Mm -hmm. Trinan Tobago has finally announced their new coach. And it's one of the biggest names you've ever heard about in your entire life. Well, I don't know, uh, not me. Maybe I your guess. next life. <laughs> yeah, or maybe your next life or your past life. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly, but it's um, Tom St. Fee. Yeah. Is it correct? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's just to show you how much I don't really act. Seen Honestly, you. and it's not disrespectful, I don't know much about the guy. Mm -hmm. uh, today, you know, when I heard the name mentioned, I started to Google and research. Yeah. And he kept on. <laughs> he has quite an interesting history. So, what do you think about the appointment? Yes, Andre. I mean, 43 years old. Yep. He's from Mall in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And being a journeyman that he is, yes. he has coached all over the world, mm -hmm. a lot of experience in Asia, mm -hmm. in Africa and in Europe, and particularly Scandinavia. Yes. But this is that guy, Andre. He has coached in like, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. he has coached in Yemen, Finland, Bangladesh, Namibia. I mean, I can go on and on. Yep. So, <laughs> I was going to scroll on here, but it was like forever, so. Yeah. But what he is, is he's, he reminds me of one of those, um, those rogue coaches that mm -hmm. took countries to World Cups before. Mm -hmm. It's looking like Otto Fister, mm -hmm. um, Winfred Schaefer with Cameroon, yes. and Bruno Metsu with Senegal. Those mm -hmm. coaches that from Europe, they come to these countries and they just take teams to the World Cup. Yeah. So let's hope he does that for Trinidad. Yep, you know, it's uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, the usual names, uh, Trinidadians. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, I, before I get into the names, I think Trinidadians, Trinbegonians, however you want to describe it, mm -hmm. were a bit unrealistic. You know, we the TTFA has well documented money problems. We know about the his issues with previous coaches, not just mm -hmm. Stephen Hartbaugh with others. Yeah. So a lot of people are throwing around names like Klinsmann and so on. I mean, we were talking just from a discussion perspective. I wanted Lippi. Yes, yeah. Marcello Lippi. Yeah. That would have been great. I would have loved that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was explaining to some people off air, it's like, all right, so we can't pay the current coaches. So that automatically narrows down our options. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the president of the TTFA today said, you know, this is the coach we could afford. So I was still, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, Zoran Vranish, Terry Fenwick. Yeah. Um, some people were saying some South American coaches. And I always said, maintain that salary definitely is going to be an issue. Because we can't, I, from what they said, because I don't know their accounts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, financial balances. Yes, and, yeah. balance, checks and balances. Yeah. That, you know, they just can't afford a top class coach. And even if a top class coach wants to come here, we can't pay the guy, come on. So, you know, it's an interesting choice. I was genuinely shocked. But, you know, uh, you know, they responded today and said they had a technical team and those, that's the guy they chose. Yeah. Um, you know, just to be diplomatic, I mean, we have to give the guy a chance. Mm, we do, yeah. Uh, you know, I was a huge fan of Stephen Hart and his work. We need results. Do you think this is the guy to give us results, Kevin? Um, Andre, any time a new coach comes into the fold, mm -hmm. there's usually a new my bunks. There's usually mm -hmm. an up in tempo and in um, fitness yeah and i think that he can do something mm -hmm. i mean it would be a change and change is sometimes you never think you know you never know andrew you never know yeah this change can be the impetus or the factor that mm -hmm. propels us to get some points on the board and yeah. points is what we need yes but i think that i mean going forward mm -hmm. a coach like this could be influential but if you look at the previous coach and actually, the previous coaches Trinidad has in the future, mm -hmm. had in the future, sorry, um, we haven't had a steady coach for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, the longest serving coaches were both Stephen Hart mm -hmm. and Bertha Sinclair. Yes. Three years. That's not long at all, no. really. It's always a guy comes in for a year, mm -hmm. two years. And Andrew, over the past 16 years, we've been with Maturana, mm -hmm. you know, in Porterfield. Bertha came back for a while. Yeah. Um, it's Ryan Vranias, yep. you had um, Otto Fista. Um, w Connection coach. Yeah, um, Febez, mm -hmm. Jamal Shabazz. So yep. the names. Latapi. Yeah, this could be another one like that because mm -hmm. um, St. Fitz's record mm -hmm. and his 10 years at his previous clubs has been really short. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we were looking at a list of air of the time, and yep. you literally it was a six months here, a four months there, yep. a year there. So continuity and consistency is not in this guy's resume. Mm -hmm. But, Andre, stranger things has happened, yep. in my opinion. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of ways you can look at it. So, you know, we reacted, everybody, everybody has their opinion. Trinidadians have their opinion, mm -hmm. who they wanted, why they wanted them. You know, a lot of coaches are expressing their opinions on social media, yeah. which I can't repeat here. <laughs> but the thing is, um, 
getting past the emotion mm-hmm. of the decision. So they cho- you, you chose this guy, and as you said, you know, you're looking at the statistics, which is what you look at when you're hiring a coach. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're not going to get the A-listers, of course. So first of all, people need to get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. He, you know, the longest time he stayed in a club, and I could be wrong, I think it was one year. We were looking at that before the, uh, the show started. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was one full year, which is, you know, as somebody, you know, your job is to win. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think his win percentage isn't all that high either. I yeah. think, um, I don't know the exact stats, but... Uh, it isn't all that great either, but what is a bit of a concern is exactly what you spoke about, you know, this is a guy, his last couple jobs, you know, he left because of discrepancies. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, is it that he is the right guy for the job or was he the only guy available that fit the criteria? Mm-hmm. And also, you know, according to the, uh, the president as well, the only coach that they could afford. Um, a lot of people are saying it's a disaster. Yeah. I, be- I hope it's not as a Trinidadian fan, but just based on statistics alone, I'm not going to use an emotional, yeah. I'm not going to do the emotional thing as like, who is this guy, whatever. Um, you know, I, I can't see it working. But of course, in the best interest of Trinidad and Tobago, I hope it does. I hope it's a fairy tale story and it comes out of nowhere and it's a match made in heaven, takes us to the World Cup. Mm-hmm. But I can't see it happening, Kevin. Um, because of the existing problems that already take place. Yeah. Even if we had an A-list coach, even let's say Clint's one came in, um, I was telling somebody else, we have actual problems in Toronto, lots of problems with the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, Stephen Hart made a very interesting statement, um, I can't remember where, but he said, um, when I was doing my degree, I did a project with him and he, we spoke about, you know, projects for countries. We spoke about Argentina and their development and why it was so successful. And one of the jobs he did in Canada was development. Mm-hmm. And he said the current system in Trinidad, we need to stop the, we need to become more scientific and more professional, and a more long-term plan. Yeah. Because for too long we have been working by guess. Mm-hmm. We put together a squad and hope it works. And it seems like if we have kind of gone back to that a little bit now, yeah. You know, we're gonna throw a coach in there and see if it works. I hope it. Listen, as a Trinidadian fan, I hope it works. But it is a bit worrying, go on. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna draw on a bit of inspiration from mm. some Italian coaches. Yes. Because um, football in the peninsula in Italy is mm. quite different from the rest of Europe, where they hire and fire coaches a lot. Mm-hmm. So, a coach like um, Saint Feet, his resume, where you have so many different clubs, mm-hmm. is actually not too uncommon in Italy. Yep. Um, look at guys like um, Francesco Guidolini. Mm-hmm. He has been sacked a lot of times, but yep. in Italy, the power or the um, strength of a manager comes from having those different experiences and also um, the fact that you are hired a lot means mm-hmm. that you are wanted and you learn more yeah. from these different jobs and these different environments that you go into. Mm-hmm. So that compendium of, um, of, of experience and knowledge mm-hmm. will help you in the next job. Yep. So I may be cutting at straws, Andre, mm-hmm. but I see that as a possible, um, a possible good thing for Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And again, to attract a coach would of a higher stature would have been difficult. Yep. But in my opinion, let's give this guy a shot. Yep. He is he's coming. He is his press conference. Um, he made some statements. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's not forget, in terms of development and all that, this guy took Qatar to the um, World Cup under 17 mm-hmm. championship for the first time. Yep. And that shows youth development. Mm-hmm. So that's probably his biggest achievement. Yeah. And for a country of Qatar to be able to do that, back then it was a big feat. Yes. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, you know, and look at our positives. I mean, it's easy to just jump on the negatives. Yeah. Um, one thing I think he has going for him, a lot of people expressed concerns and said, the next coach of Fernando Bego needs to have, you know, great knowledge mm. of Fernando Bego football, which I agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a couple, well, of course, the usual candidates, Terry Fenwick and Pranish and those guys, and a couple of local guys. Yeah. But um, I think the Gold Cup qualification is a blessing in this guy's, which we went in great detail about, Kevin yeah. and I. Uh, so I'll put that in the link below. So for those of you who don't know, we still have a chance to qualify for the Gold Cup, yes. which is great for him because now he has this extra set of games mm-hmm. that probably he normally would not have had if we qualified. Mm-hmm. So now he gets the a feel for the players, he gets to physically see them yeah. because he will have to trust the technical uh, team to tell him, well, these are the guys, these are the guys, he has to get familiar with all the clubs. But now he could see the players in action mm-hmm. and then by the time the World Cup qualifiers come around, he would have some sort of knowledge of the players, yeah. which would be serve him best because if I'm a coach and I come in, I would want as much friendlies as possible if in a completely unknown country. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how his networking is set up 
Um, that's one of the things that was really impressive about Hart and Klinsman as well. The, the knowledge of players everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one positive for him that could work in our favor. He gets to mess around. Um, what I think he needs, and this is, this is us looking at the positives, mm -hmm. is for the local uh, professional league and the football personalities to really rally together now yeah. and say, okay, all right, so we all disagreed. Some of us like the appointment, some of us don't. A lot of people obviously have strong opinions. They all work together with the guy to give him the knowledge he needs. Because mm -hmm. that's what they do in other countries. I mean, they basically network, say this is what we have, this is what we work with. Um, if he's as good as he says he is, you know, he will definitely be contacting the Central FC, he's any W connections, he'll be going to games. Yeah. And he has a lot of work to do. So I think it is probably one of the silver linings. Because a lot of people are saying doom and gloom. <laughs> and you know there are reasons because we I mean we only qualified to do, for the World Cup once yeah. and maybe that's something people need to sometimes remember mm -hmm. um, that maybe you know based on previous form Trinidad you know we only went to one World Cup and you know I think people speak as if we are a nation that qualify all the time yeah. so well, that's that's my positive from the whole situation nation with a really deep football culture yeah oh. and, and I don't I don't think that um, when you look at Trinidad, that's mm. off topic a bit. Mm. I mean, that going to club games on a every every week basis mm -hmm. and filling the stadiums. We don't really do that. No. So and the Americans have that on us. So yeah. So shame I, on you, Trinidad. Yeah, that's my problem, really. Yeah, I and I think so. He definitely has his work cut out for him. Um, it's definitely something we need to look into. But the the whole thing is that everyone has their opinion. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think about it below. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that everybody is talking about. Yeah. Everybody has something to say. So let us know in the comment section below, you know, what you think about the appointment, what you think about the coach, who you think should have been hired. Mm. Just let us know. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, Kevon, where can we find you? You can find me at Kev868 on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me at Andres Oglal on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to like our Facebook page mm -hmm. and subscribe to our YouTube channel because when you do that, you automatically qualify for a chance to win a copy of FIFA 17 and also the possibility of getting tickets to upcoming Trinidad and Tobago games. Yeah. Okay guys, so don't forget, if you like and subscribe our page on YouTube, Extra Time TV, you instantly qualify to win a copy of FIFA 17. So don't forget, like and subscribe.